Ilkthar reread the document before him for the fifth time. The human, Celia the Thomas, had drafted it far faster than he had expected. The document as a whole was well written, to the point, and held no loopholes for either party to exploit, at least not that he could see. It was very different than anything he had read before, legally speaking. Making some small changes, and looking it over three more times to be sure, he submitted the proposal to his accountant, the closest thing he had to a lawyer on hand. As he pulled up his jaws for the day, a breaking news bulletin reel appeared in a small screen on his monitor. We bring you this breaking news bulletin. The conflict on Dextrist 4 is over, a female Mipot said, dressed in an outfit that her people would consider almost too risque for a public television broadcast. That's right, Hugh, a rather muscular and shirtless Nemean male said excitedly, almost giddily. As most of you already know, the Dantris system has been contested for many cycles between the Grengels and the human's closest neighbour, the Goipli. Hugh interrupted. Wasn't this humanity's first military campaign after first contact? Right you are, Hugh, he said. It's absolutely amazing that in a single battle they ended that conflict. But does. I thought human and Goipli had border skirmishes all the time. Why would they help them? We all know humans are crazy, right? Well, those skirmishes are true. They happen almost every local planetary rotation, but the humans call them war games. What's worse is that the Gloip TC logic in such, uh, games and willingly participate in them. Not to mention that they are humanity's biggest trading partner despite all those skirmishes. How about Beric? The female exclaimed. What sort of horror superweapon did these humans bring to end the conflict so quickly? She asked. They didn't bring a superweapon or something unknown to the galaxy, he replied, still excited. They literally dropped their army on top of the Grenjol from space. There's a whole warrior cast dedicated to such a thing too. They go by the name of Orbital Drop Shock Troopers. No one's done that before. I mean, what Saint Sapient would do such a stupidly dangerous thing, and they'd be good at it? Humans, of course, she replied without missing a beat. As some of you may recall in an interview I did with a human some time ago, he said that Globty were easy to relate to, cute, good neighbours, and lovers of pranks. He went on to say, and I hope I'm saying this right, that humans would go out of their way to help their armadillo bro neighbours, and that no mountain was high enough. Those two species have such a quirky culture. Agreed, her co-host said. Now. Ekthar turned off his vid screen, already knowing most of the events, as well as a bit of first contact history with the humans. It had been a big deal, after all. First new faster than light capable species in 800 years. The humans had actually pranked a species of known pranksters at their first official diplomatic meeting with something called a rolled rick. While most species would find such a thing offensive beyond words, the Gwoti thought it was the most daring prank of all time, and loved it. Then they did the same thing to the humans. Of course, the humans loved being pranked back, and such a thing spawned something the galaxy had never heard of before. A war of pranks between species. It did not last very long. Humans were declared the winner, and the Gwoti declared that they'd have their vengeance within the next 80 solar rotations of Soul Free as an official declaration of war. The whole ordeal was utterly bizarre to Ichthar back then, and it still was this very day. However, the conflict on Dextrix 4 was too far away to affect him nor his business in any way, so he felt reasonably comfortable in ignoring it all. It was just another small conflict between other races on the other side of the galactic arm. Nothing to worry about at all. Selina checked what public news report she had access to after the public news bulletin had passed. This far from the system in question meant that any news received was at least a month old, which meant her Uncle Robert had been sent there almost a week after she boarded the passenger liner. I hope Uncle Robert's okay she said to herself, wanting to send another vidmail but unable to do so because of the out-system data charges she was unable to afford. As it was, she was barely able to afford a single low-grade takeout meal for a single person with the current funds in her account. From the news article she was able to access, she was able to determine that the United Terran Republic forces led the charge with air and orbital support provided by the Goipti Void Defense Ministry. 10,000 humans were dropped from orbit by Pelican-class troop transports. Troops from all over human controlled space have volunteered from the United States of Terra, Lunieri dynasties, Martian democracies, outer world coalitions, all the way to the relatively newly formed Free Peoples of Proxima. Human casualties were listed to be between 5 and 7%, an overwhelming victory. Being a human, Selena knew that the volunteer force was hardly anything. It was the nation equivalent of letting a neighbour borrow a lawnmower or helping set up for a party they asked you to attend. However, the galaxy at last seemed to think it was a huge deal, so she was not going to detract from that notion. She had more sense than that. After eating her breakfast, some kind of mildly sweet grain similar enough to grits or cream of wheat, 
She went down to her workshop to finish the cleaning and alignment of her prosthetics. Warplaw had a particular rotation. His day was far longer than Galactic Standard, at 35 hours long, while Galactic Standard was 20 hours long. During her stay on the passenger liner, her sense of time and circadian rhythm had gotten quite skewed, and now she had to readjust to a far different rotation than she was used to. Despite the huge difference in time, businesses had to adhere to Galactic Trade Commission standards of a single shift per local rotation, unless waived by the employer-employee. In such an event, rates of pay was to be increased by an amount agreed on beforehand. It was going to be a long day.